Welcome back, everybody, to some more NACE Star League Collegiate Rocket League. We just saw game number one of tonight go through. We have a 3-1 victory going the way of the St. Clair Saints over U Ottawa, but that is the past. What is now is going to be Northern Kentucky University versus Oakland University here for our second and last Rocket League match of the broadcast. I'm still here with Vincent, and I think this is going to be another continuation of that theme where we have a team coming in in Oakland, a somewhat mainstay in the collegiate level of play up against kind of that young upstart squad in Northern Kentucky. Yeah, you know, I, you know, it's funny to me to, to hear that too because in a couple of different esports, you know, collegiate-wise, Kentucky in general is pretty good but this Northern Kentucky squad relatively new. So, um, you know, coming up against the likes of Oakland, I'm really interested to see how they're going to play. Obviously, uh, both 1-1 records in week one. Uh, so coming into into today, they are, are already in a victory. Um, but, you know, it's so early, you never know what that means. Is, is that, you know, you play that lower level team, you're picking up a nice little victory. Uh, and so now you're going to play the big boys if you're in KU. Well, I don't know, but I'm certainly interested to see because, um, like you were talking about, Oakland, a main state, and, well, from what you've been telling me, they got some uh, pretty darn solid players on the roster, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do, and I think a huge component of a lot of Oakland's success is being able to consistently build up their roster. I know in the past that they've had a team that has made some forays into college competition, but they've always really been in that middle tier of competition where you can get somewhat far in those really elite level competitions, but maybe never really break into that semis, into that prize money pool. And I think with these recent pushes, they were able to take down some teams. I know over the summer within competitions, they were beating teams like Northwood Blue, which is one of the teams for Northwood University, arguably the best overall university for all of Collegiate Rocket League. So uh, that is being able to take them down in a series is no small feat. Very, uh, You could count on one hand, really, the number of teams who actually have done that. So it's very impressive to see them out here. And I think Northern Kentucky is another school. As you mentioned, Kentucky tends to be very good at a lot of esports. And some schools really do have those specialties, but trying to buff out those programs all the way around we have to see it's kind of a step in progress for some esports, but I am very excited to see them uh, kind of get to the field here and make sure that they can actually execute on the game plan because I think it's going to be a similar tale and that game one will really have to set the pace and potentially some people might get out here and get sucker punched and be caught by surprise. So I don't think we'll have to wait too long before we can actually get these guys in here because I believe everyone is on the field for game number one. It's Northern Kentucky. It is Oakland University in a best of five here in week number two of some Nace Star League Collegiate Rocket League. And I am all here for it with you here, Vincent. Yeah, 100%, 150%. We are getting underway, as you said, enjoying the depth here in the Nace Star League. Oakland and Northern Kentucky, I'm loving it. Ooh, and then right off the bat, an awkward touch, and Jay Wismont's going to be punished with a goal coming in. Great finish by Rickles. A fantastic, indeed. Yeah, like you said, just a bit of a weird touch. Couldn't quite get behind it, actually. Uh, now that I see it again, I don't really think that was on Jay Wiz so much. It's just a really good touch. And Rickles to just jam it in there, giving Northern Kentucky the early lead. Actually, looking over this Northern Kentucky roster, I've actually played and ca cast this team before, but they changed usernames a little bit from when they used to be. It's just a slight change. This is a pretty solid squad, so I think I was coming in with a slightly different frame of reference, but I think right now, right off the bat, they're proving their pedigree, getting that early goal, but they got to make sure they prove it on defense as well. Really getting that save off. Rickles with another 50 rule, trying to pass it forward, but Raz a bit too quick and will be able to get back. Pig final shot will be turned away and a very excitable opening minute we have here in game number one. Yeah, I noticed a couple of situations where there was some fantastic bumps as well, particularly from Oakland, but Northern Kentucky as well, that really helped set the tone there, both offensively and defensively. So be on the lookout for that harsh play, that aggressive play on either side. So as we see Oakland get creative with these touches, will turn one away, awkward ball for J-Cubed. They're not gonna get contact. Rickles open shot, pick going for a demo, and instead they will be touching that ball. That orange trail trays that unfortunate 50 out into the corner is Jay Wiz. will try to slow things down, but instead Roz will be beckoned into the play for a long clear and deeper clears down the field for Oakland. I think it does a lot to dissipate pressure, maybe give you some chance to breathe, but not too much formation allowed. And you're trying to build up your offense, these longer balls mostly just being dealt with by the defense up until someone misses Rickles the goal line save, and we almost were all tied up. 
Nearly. And well, that might be it. No, quite wide on that one. He fell for the angle, but either way, it's all been Oakland on the control for about the last minute or so. Been a good defense from Northern Kentucky, but it's been near miss after near miss. And, and that eventually is probably going to go Oakland's way. At least for right now, seems to be working out. Long ball again from J-Cubed. Only getting it met by Rickles. Demo, Raz racing to it, but Pig actually gets there first. Jay Woodsmont on their horse. To be able to tap that one to the side. Rule can't get an extension on their touch. And another one rattle off the ceiling and down and away. Some physical plays echoing out as a demo comes in on last defender from Oakland. Shouldn't harm them much. The respawn comes in. Both teams somewhat searching erratically at times, just hitting the ball around the field, just hoping for, hoping for an opening. But so far, it seems like things are coming to somewhat of a pause here in the mid game. We've crossed half time, and still only that one goal coming off that early first touch mistake. And now, potentially a second as no one is home in the backfield for Oakland. And that's number two for Northern Kentucky. Number two, but again, a mistake, right? We talked about it in that last series. The team making the least amount of mistakes, usually going to come up victorious. But the other thing from Oakland, Northern Kentucky, they haven't been, you know, the stalwarts of defense or anything. Oakland just needs to shoot shots on target. They've been off target so often, and it really is coming to bite them now. I think one thing that's super important to remember about this game is when you're playing defense, you have to be mindful of infield passes. Do we have someone on the backboard? Do we have someone to be able to cut something out if this person gets beat? But then sometimes you completely neglect just a deep ball, and that longer clears all it takes to really completely unfurl your defense. I think Oakland is learning that lesson right now that even though they are playing for the most part fairly solid defense their two goals have just been off of a missed touch and just pushing up too far so I think Northern Kentucky really bringing them all the way back to fundamentals here in game number one at least so far as long as this defense hold those two goals might be more than enough and, and again there Oakland you saw trying to get a little bit fancy with it I think you, you gotta like you said go back to basics it's, it's really simple the pass plays they can be effective too and we've seen a lot of individual duels coming through a lot of individual attempts from Oakland and well a lot of them missing their mark so back to offense we'll go with there Oakland. we go and Jay Wiz strike it better next time back post perfect placement and they're right back in it and look at this, I said keep it simple, play together, use the pass plays, and they finally did it. Oakland pull it off as I speak, and they put together a goal that is phenomenal. It's one of the, my favorite types of shots because from the defensive perspective, you see your camera whip one way and then immediately get slapped to the other direction. And now the counter tech J cube, they turn too wide, potentially an immediate second goal, but it will go to by the wayside. Northern Kentucky will survive, and at least despite that great goal coming in from Oakland, they still need another to be able to extend this game into added time. Roz will try to kick it off with a longer clear, but Rule cuts it out, and it's a great air dribble. Pig going for a second. Rickles, his third man, will decide to play this cautious. Glad he did. He was beat over the top. J-Cubed and company trying him out one more foray into the offensive zone. Rickles, a temporary clear, and... Now a long retreat from both sides will give some space to breathe. And with 20 seconds remaining, the tension has to be at an all-time high. 100%, especially because Oakland are playing so aggressively, and there it is. I thought somebody was there on the back uh, the back shoulder of J-Cubed, but it was actually the demo that allowed the opening. His rule coming, trying to get back, but he's just not in time. Fantastic demo coming in from Oakland. They tie the game with 13. Seconds on the clock here, Danger Taco. It's all down to the wire. Pig was just not fast enough to get back, and that last defender was left stranded. And maybe we won't even see out of time. Oakland going for some heroics. Zero second reigns in. Jay Wiz puts it in a dangerous area. J Cube takes an effort at it, but ultimately will be turned away. One more chance from Jay Wiz. It's down into the middle, and it is down into the turf. OT in game number one. What a comeback attempt from Oakland. Can they cap it off? And this would be devastating for Northern Kentucky if they were to lose this one, but what a fantastic comeback, like you said. Here we go, overtime, game number one. What a fantastic series this is shaping up to be. Defense keeps getting called into action from Northern Kentucky. First tap away from JQ Roz. Tough angle, and oh! there it is. No one closes him down. Everyone getting a goal for Oakland, and everyone getting a share of the spoils. They're going to take game number one.
Rickles thought he had the clear. He did have the clear, but it was a fantastic touch coming back in from Oakland that cues up Roz for the victory. And Oakland taking it in comeback fashion there in game one. Truly impressive. And we talked about mentality. We talked about being able to, to keep your, your mind in the game. It's a fantastic example of, of Oakland doing just that. You know, down two goals early. And they were, I mean, they were bad goals too. And they were, they were, and what I mean by bad is that they were just, you know, they were, they could have been helped, but Oakland made some big mistakes and they put that out of their mind entirely and, and came back, made the, made the push for overtime and then scored in the first 15 seconds of that overtime. Really great stuff from Oakland. And well, you gotta, your eyes have to turn towards Northern Kentucky and say, okay, now what? And now what? The question has been asked, and hopefully their answer is to tighten up around the defense. It's so tough to give those goals up, especially if they're sitting right in front of your goal. So Northern Kentucky given a lot to no think way. about. And Jay Wismont, they were the one who gave up the first goal last game, and now they're going to seize one two seconds in. Fantastic look. I mean, that's just a great touch. Everyone going for that initial ball, right? And no one back to, to hold off the, the win from Jay Wismont. And, now Oakland ahead early. Like I said, now what was the question? Oakland have answered early on. Right now, Northern Kentucky just trying to slap the ball across their area just to get any sense of momentum about their attack. But right now, they're getting closed down in the midfield. J-Cubed not going to be able to get any more of a connection on that touch. So Rickles will take over. Big now. Building out of the midfield. No air dribble, so J-Cubed will cut out. J-Wiz, another 50. Open hit for Rickles. It's going to deflect. It's going to go right back to them. A good flick. Roz is beaten, but so is the post. It's going to just glance down, and Jay Wiz will be able to gather good pressure from Northern Kentucky, getting creative with it, but going to have to try a little bit harder than that next time. Well, and you got to have follow-up. That's the other key, right? No one to follow that up. That could have been a goal, but no one in position, so goes off to the side regardless. Oh, another great demo from Roz. The big ants rank makes it even one. So a nice clear from Northern Kentucky. Buys a little time, but not enough because Jay Wiz is streaking onto this one. Double tap. Roz is up for it. Rule left alone. And they get a brilliant 50 to slow that foray forward down. So Rickles trying to build something out, but all these midfield 50s doing so much for Oakland to be able to buy them time. These deportations show me that they are not too concerned about the ball entering their half. JQ will confidently collect this one. Get bumped out of their way. Rickles going to get met with a 50 again, though. And even when Oakland seemingly gives the ball away, it just seems like Northern Kentucky is just a half step behind all of these challenges. Really, up until right now, they haven't had much space to breathe. Now, what can they do with this? Only an air dribble, 50 straight down the middle, but a slow fall by Rickles going to get cleared away by J Cubed. Yeah, it, it seems like everything that Northern Kentucky up to right now, a little bit one dimensional. And like you said, a half step behind. One, that one half second, though, it's so impactful. And you can see it, it, it nets the victory of any 50-50s and everything inside the midfield, but maybe a step up, two demos, and the aggressive push. One thing I'm loving out of Oakland is how they bait in these challenges, just barely flick it by or the Kentucky. It's something, it's something they could potentially work into their game plan themselves, but at least for right now, they need to make sure they're holding down on defense. Oakland is touching awkward ball after awkward ball onto target. Very, very difficult for build out. One more hit by JQ will not be followed by Jaywiz. Went for a double tap on their own. Tough angle, not gonna find it. JQ gets chipped over and Rickles another clear, but unfortunately it's right into the waiting bumper of Roz. Even when they get a demo to buy himself some time, the spawn is just flawless for Oakland and on we play. Cross half time, still only a one goal game. Yeah, you gotta have a plan. When you're gonna clear that long, you really need a plan. You have to know where you're going with things. And right now, Northern Kentucky, a bit planless whenever they make those clears. They're just trying to survive, and that's an open goal. Open net, j Cube to easy does it. He gets, gets into the the best positions, and it's Jay Wismont with the setup. I think Pig is kicking themselves a bit as that ball went into the corner. I think they want to be able to turn up that pace. They know they're a half step behind, and I think sometimes teams get into their own head, and so you see Pig turn toward that ball, try to knock that one again, but since Oakland defense was quick enough, they cleared it not past just the one offensive player, but past both of them. And then it was just an easy tap in for J Cubed. Speaking of easy though, I thought it was an easy save. J Cubed was wobbling a little bit on that steer back, but well, ultimately 
get the touch away. And Oakland's defensive woes of last game seem to have subsided, and they're looking a lot more stacked there in the backfield right now for the Kentucky going back to, again, as he said, just a purposeless touches on some of these balls. It just seems like the ball kind of goes for, and they're hoping for the best. But I would love to see something a bit more creative coming out of them. Yeah, and and it's not that they're not that they're not trying to do things. It's really just that they're trying to clear the ball. And well, because of how solid Oakland has been about controlling the ball and, and the areas that, that they're playing in, it's just really hard to find anything off the back of that. So another opportunity there missed from Northern Kentucky that was close, but no cigar. And we're back at it again. It's an unfortunate flick up. JQ will get a win. Rickles down the line and Jay Wiz sets up a double tap for themselves. They have open territory and they're going to dunk one down triumphantly for 3-0. Easy peasy says Jay Wiz Monta. And indeed it is when he's doing it like that. No one home, not in the slightest. He knocked, he certainly did on the top post and no one answered. So he knocked the ball straight into the net. Three to nothing here with 50 seconds on the clock. Oakland looking to take a 2-0 lead in this BO5. That's why, of course, Rocket League is a team game, and part of playing a team game is being greater than the sum of your parts, but it always does really help to have one player with great mechanical ability. Jay was showing it off there, and Oakland collectively, I think showing the former point as well, they are playing incredibly solid on the goal line and through the midfield. And I think game number two is a testament to that. If game number one had to go to overtime to separate these two teams, I think that thought is a mere prayer for Northern Kentucky as they have been on the back foot throughout most of this game. And right now, I think they're just trying to push forward maybe something here at the death. But even then, Roz and company will be able to deal with it. And all three of them committing on this one and still getting some saves. They want that clean sheet. And they just might get it as J-Cube is trying to kill the ball down. One more touch across. And I guess Castaker's number two had to rear its head eventually. Rule will get one. Can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Either way, yeah, this is a nice shot from Rule. I mean, eventually with all of those commitments, you know, it felt inevitable that Kentucky were going to get one. It was just a matter of time. And with two seconds on the clock, they pick it up. So one for the road this is going to be a uh, very short two seconds. And it's all over least for game number two it wasn't a clean sweep that they were hoping but a magical look from oakland they they controlled pretty much that entire game i'd say you know if i had to put it down you know on a number right i'd say it was probably one you know four minutes to one minute right mm -hmm. control wise you know oakland always knew what they wanted to do they always and their passing was was also on point whereas you, you have to ask the question northern kentucky you know, we talked about them sort of hitting the ball without a lot of a lot of clear indication of what that would mean. Um, and, and that's exactly what we saw. Nothing, you know, no passing, no, uh, no long, long touches towards another player down the field. Um, and, and that really made it easy for Oakland to just control that midfield and, and take over as soon as the clears came through. And those clues did come through, and they were able to take control, and they've taken control of the series. A firm grasp, indeed, that's going to have to be a reverse sweep in this best of five from Northern Kentucky to take this series off the hands of those or their rivals. J-Cubed is trying to start things off very dramatically with a side wall shot, but will be turned away. Rule on the far side will call Roz into action. No demo from Pig. Now Rickles with a follow-up straight on target. Roz, another one to the sideline. Pig. Pass in the middle, Rules reaching for it, and they can't reach around the shot. It's unfortunately going to clatter off that near post, and that would have been such a lifeline for the Northern Kentucky offense. Magical stuff. They are trying, but failing, unfortunately, uh, at the final attempt. Another attempt there. I mean, at least this, so far in this one, you know, 45 seconds in, Ducky, they've got control of the ball consistently. And they've got some opportunities. That's what they were lacking there in game number two. I think we'll try a solo play to set things up, but ultimately we'll give way for Rickles straight into the ceiling. Raz is up for it. We'll tap it gently to the sideline. Jay cubed. Not the pinch they're hoping for, so Jay was going to have to help out. Decent 50 will only yield way to Pig. And the inopportune touches from NKU. I think they want to hit this ball in a more dominant fashion, but instead these partial touches 
are somewhat stalling out the offense. They have to wait for something a bit more substantial like Rickles going for a flip reset on that challenge. No contact on the follow through. So we have to go back to the drawing board, but a lot more even across the, the back end here for both these teams. 90 seconds have come and gone and we're still waiting for our first goal. Yeah, a lot better from Northern Kentucky. They've got a lot more control. They've been good defensively, generally speaking, and they've also had those rotations on point. So we talk about mistakes. There's been a lot less of them here from NKU in the early stages of game three. So wondering if they can keep this going or if Oakland's gonna be able to peek something through. Jay was almost got there, oh. Ross. We'll have a shot go off the post as well. Now the follow through coming through. Rule just puts it wide and now we'll see rebound. Rickles decides against this one and they are the second last man back making sure they keep that defense solid. But both teams getting robbed by the frame. And sometimes those shots can be pixels away from getting your team in the lead. We'll have to keep on waiting as both sides with a claim to the crown here. It's exactly what you want to see if you're Northern Kentucky putting Oakland on their back heel at times, not just constantly aggressing on offense. I think this is the answer we're looking for, but I need that end product out of them. That's exactly right. The end product needs to come through from one or the other. We need something. With two minutes now just about to tick away, no one able to put a goal in the back of the net and well, that just kind of goes to show these adjustments that NKU have made. Oakland playing the same good game they've been playing all day. It's just about NKU at this moment. Let's see if Rickles will decide against this. Jay Wiz can't extend that play, so soft touchdown, bump into Raz. Big will recognize the danger, tap that one to the side. Rule, waiting for it in the mid. Only tap it down the middle and get dunked by Jay Wiz. What a follow through coming through. Can they get another pass off? Raz. J cubed are there still lobbed high pig tough angle it's a rule one actually between two oh of these boy. players were officially in a 2v2 as now we're just trying to figure out if the change in game mode mid game is going to produce any results J cubed going to be left alone temporarily gets a nice 50 and a delicate touch into the mid J Wiz will extend and back to kind of a trading blows possession and also possession in the midfield as 50 after 50 keeps rattling through and honestly, only overtime is going to be tearing these two teams apart or potentially that silver goal territory is an open shot opened up for Pig, but they're just a bit too far back. Yeah, oh, there's the bump. Rule one no longer in effect, I think. Yeah, looks like they're all good. And uh, with that, Oakland with a nearly positive opportunity to go forward, but it's broken up once again. NKU, and I think you're right, overtime might be where we're headed, but it's certainly looking like sudden death is here regardless as it's 40 seconds left on the clock. And a nice demo by Rickles opens things up for Peg. They get a flick past Roz, but do well to slow the play down. Rickles, high lob, J Wiz. They're planted on the ground. They get dumped right oh! through. And Rickles gets a goal with 30 seconds to go. Fantastic. Look at this. The second attempt is good. J Wiz thought he had it, but it was off of the back of a weird touch off angle. Whatever it is, it's enough for Rickles. And with 30 seconds, Oakland have to make the moves. Otherwise, we're getting a game at number four. Fantastic save coming through. Jay Wiz trying to make up for it, setting up J Cubed. It's going to be turned to side. Raz, high lob instead of the shot will be dunked through. One more goal could seal it for Northern Kentucky. That shot going wide. Rule on the double tap. It's also wide. Oh. It's just clattered off that near post. Pig one more lob. But even if these goals do not go in, it's burning off precious seconds. Defense holding so far for Northern Kentucky. It's a lead demo. Roz no! trying to take it over time. No! And they can't. Pixels away. Northern Kentucky squeak by in game number three. Oh my goodness, literally pixels, and that's all it was. Nothing could be closer. Yeah, a, a breath of air it gotta be exhaling from every NKU player at the moment. They stay alive for another game. Man, adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. It took a couple maps, but NKU looked a different team than we saw here at the beginning. They made the moves to start playing a little bit more tight on their defensive rotations. And when we came to the offensive side, better decisions. Great decision making when it came to putting that ball further out. Whenever they would make the, the longer clear, there was always somebody to try and make the uh, at least play for a 50 on the other end of it. So we'll see 
if the success can continue. They need two more wins to complete the reverse sweep. Northern Kentucky at least has some momentum behind them. So now as we wipe the score line, head into game number four, see if any consistency is in the cards for them. Trying with something a little bit slower here in the corner, but unfortunately Pig and Rickles cannot combine again. Now Rickles trying to get back lane defense will combine with his teammate for a clear and J-Cubed will try one more effort throwing in. Goes past one, flicks past a second, but ultimately no one there. And a bit disheveled both on offense and defense, but no harm, no foul and keep on going after the first 30 seconds. And yeah, J-Cubed really just trying to, you know, make a solo play right there. And I think it's a bit of a mistouch, honestly, to give them, give them the, uh, the out to Northern Kentucky. It's been an Oakland uh, show for the moment, in the first minute, at the very least, and continuing to be thus right now. But again, NKU, their defensive rotations have been such an improvement that it really hasn't mattered. You know, some close shots, but ultimately not that good. Ooh, and long clear, clears the way for j -Wiz. They just have to put it on target, and of course they do. They've done it before, and now, in a crucial way, got that lead in game number four, trying to close the series out. I guess that's that caster's curse coming in. Big made a great save there on the first attempt, but then the second attempt is just not in position. Nobody rotates in quick enough, and it's Oakland with the first goal of this game number four of the best of five. So J Cubed will try and keep the aggression going. J Wiz will slow things down and get sent to Narnia for that. What a bump. And now Pig, <laughs> the bump attempt on J Cubed. No contact going through. So Rickles. Throws it across, j -Wiz equal to. Ooh, with a very deep rotation, potentially for that exact reason, but gets dunked right down. Rickles gets dunked again, and Roz serving it up hot for Oakland, gets goal number two. Oh my goodness, there it is. That's so unfortunate, man. Rickles uh, has to be a little bit more aggressive, I think, on that touch, because there's two players coming in from the other angle, and you're no, there's no way you're dodging both of them. My goodness, Rickles is, uh, I, feel, I feel so bad for Rickles is that they take their time, they get the dunk over and they have to get yeah. back and try to amend, but then Roz is hitting the weight room, just dunking through both of them, just <laughs> too much strength to be contained. And it's a rough way to go through, but a nice pop-off moment, I'm sure, for Oakland. Two goal lead was the comeback margin for Oakland in game number one, but Northern Kentucky has yet to show that they can do the same. That shot will give them a little encouragement. That will be turned away though, rule. Going to concede to Rickles. Big trying to get some form of bunk, but no contact being made. And I do like the variety of approaches being tried by Northern Kentucky, but ultimately something eventually has to go. J cubed on the counter. And that is a very dangerous margin to go up by 3-0 now with half the game to go. Yeah, the, the problem is that the, the full commitment there on the offense. You had one player coming in from the rotation that was pink. He missed it. And no, there was no backup plan. So Oakland, in position three to nothing to take this one in that three one style could be what is happening just for today two three ones would be an interesting one but well northern kentucky they still got two and a half minutes to try and bring this back and two and a half minutes is more than enough time obviously if one team can score three goals in half the game you can do the same oh so it's certainly a mountain to climb it seems mentally especially since we did see that nice comeback potential and then just slowly erode on defense. The offense has been threatening at times and they are getting some touches by as Rule will fake pass one, fake pass two, just trying to get some form of angle in the middle. Rickles is there, but it will be denied by the Oakland defense yet again. Some more corner kerfuffling and the ball will be able to go down to J-Cubed and the pinch off of the players. So unfortunate. I mean, yeah, this, this is unfortunate for sure. For Pig, but ultimately Pig has, you know, got to make a play there, and well, just couldn't get a, couldn't get around the front of the ball, couldn't get the tap to the left, and goes straight into the net. So now, not yet an unwinnable scenario, but we're getting, I mean, we're getting close to that mark, aren't we, Danger Taco? A minute forty on the clock for uh, goals to be scored, and I mean, that's that's a tough ask for any any team. I think as someone in competitive, it's not necessarily the scoreline as much as just the vibe of the game. I think when you start to hit the forfeit button, and right now, 
seems like KU might have wanted to do that if this was indeed a ranked match. As they have had some shots, but nothing too dangerous. They've had a couple goal line saves forced out, but ultimately the flow of this game has been uh, very confidently in the side of Oakland. And even in, you can tell in their defense, they're not rushing to clear the ball. They're more than happy to take a shot on target just because they know angles are on their side, the power is not going to be enough. And I think it's really showing through in this game plan where they're kind of just waiting for pressure. And ultimately, if it's not a creative buildup from Northern Kentucky, it's really nothing to make Oakland sweat too much. Yeah, not not too much at all. And, and 45 seconds now is the time. And with four, four goals still to find, you know, in KU, they're they're in that position where yeah mentally you got to be feeling it uh, and, and on top of that uh, the timeline in, in and of itself you have to what get you know, four goals and less than 10 seconds apiece that's a that's a huge ask so right now it's a, just Northern Kentucky trying to get some pride out of this game at number four did a good job to bring it to this point but ultimately that's where their road will end taking on the final seconds and we'll see if they can get one more for the road rule Tap one pass, but Roz sends it right on down. Jay Wiz capping it off in style. Double tap attempt, and they're going to hit the ground only. Rule, one more chance. Trying to catch up to it. Only gets a 50 or so. I thought it's going to roll straight up. J cubed into the sky, down to a teammate. Now across to the sideline, where he will eventually come down to arrest. Again, Oakland starting off a little shaky, but they are able to claim this 3-1 series victory and take another game or series win rather into those lead records yeah yeah 2-0 now that score on the season for oakland they're loving it they're feeling good and well in ku they they put on a pretty decent showing for us i mean that that fantastic game number one really set the tone though um and, and i think you know i don't want to say that that mentally took nku out of that because it did pick up a win after the fact um but it really did make things difficult you know it's always hard to come back from from a position where you, you kind of feel like you had to you had the victory in hand and you just barely gave it away um which is kind of what happened there in game number one the 2-0 going the, then to 3-2 in the favor of oakland um had to hurt them and i think it's such a brutal thing because i think we also see a repeat somewhat of the story that we saw with saint Clair in ottawa in that you have a team that comes in and they start to play well and they falter and then they start to play well and then they falter and it's just that back and forth system where it's not necessarily you always have to play at the top of your game but when you do have those lows you have to make sure your team stays somewhat together i felt like i used i think the word disheveled at sometimes to describe the northern kentucky defense in which i couldn't really tell who was about to commit to the ball who was going to get that next touch or maybe the rotations were just a little bit out of sync and i didn't really see that cohesion that i think you really do need and i think it's something they can build on of course this is only their second series of the season but these are things i think when you look back at that tape you start to regret a little bit and saying ah that touch maybe could have taken a different way because a lot of those goals from oakland they were just built off of pressure but sometimes it's just very simple mistakes and in a way those are the most frustrating games because it's not you being outplayed it's not you being completely outclassed by a superior team it's somewhat like you're losing the game rather than the opponents are winning and i think that can be a brutal thing but i think all these teams are competitors and i, I think at least going back and looking at that tape it's something that i'm very excited to see how this team plays going into week number three I know, Vincent, I'm speechless too. It's so crazy to see. And I know with at least this game down, we are at least looking forward to the next series of games for Rocket League. And I know at least with Oakland, we're trying to wrangle a player to be able to pick their brain. But I'm always curious about teams like this because going into NACE, I think you get slotted into these sections of teams in your re region and you have to play against each other. It's somewhat like a king of the mountain to see if you are truly going to be the team that comes out and has your state's bragging rights or your region's bragging rights. And at least Oakland getting off on the right foot here. I do like those wins that they were able to get down in the immediate, um, in the immediate aftermath of that game. But even showing that mental fortune game number one like right off the bat they get kicked around and then they're able to get the win and be able to close that series out in a very theatrical fashion uh, theatrical fashion in game one and then in game number three four it's just pure execution being able to actually commit through that so it's uh, nice to see all these things uh going through for the squad and at least for the side of northern kentucky i think this is something that they are going to struggle with it a lot because when you're trying to break into the upper echelon 
of that next tier of collegiate rocket league i think cutting out those mistakes is going to be the true way that you're actually going to be able to actually go through to that next stage uh beating out teams like this minimizing the amount of open nets but at the end of the day only one team can go through so as we're waiting for and as we're waiting for Roz here we do have them connected in so if we uh bring you guys into uh Roz to be able to talk to you guys about that game gg i see you guys are in the facility so clearly you guys are in person are you guys doing the fist bumps between goals i mean how was that how does that help your morale being in the, your facility there uh it's absolutely immaculate um having jq next year at all times is just a complete vibe uh he's the loudest one of our team but He's usually sitting in the middle. I was in the sit sitting in the middle this time, but we were doing fist bumps. So yeah, it was nice. That's uh, arguably the most crucial part of any team uh, atmosphere is if you can't actually fist bump your opponent, it just feels so disconnected. But uh, going back to uh, being in the facility and, and talking about it, uh, you guys have been putting in a lot of work. I know you guys had played in the summer series and you were able to get a lot of reps in. I felt like I really saw it all come together, even just right straight forward. You were able to come back through some adversity, but game number one, just within a sample set within that series, what was going through your guys' mind in game number one? I know there's a lot of warm-up potential, but you guys really had to mount a comeback fairly quickly. What was it like going into the series and then immediately having to really pull out the theatrics? Um, yeah, we knew that the two goals that happened were just kind of a uh, happenstance. It wasn't really because we were playing horrible. Like, we just had to get warmed up because uh, Justin was coming back from, or Jake was coming back from classes. So it was just kind of like trying to get reacquainted with the 3v3 play style and just trying to get warmed up was the real issue. Once we got warmed up, we were pretty set for the series, I'd say. And it's, it's something that is uh, nice to see, uh, too, because, of course, you guys get us warmed up in the series before, but, of course, it's nice to start off to that game with just an immediate nice comeback, just getting the vocal cords warm, getting the crowd hyped up, as I see you guys are those entertainers. But looking forward here, that was because of round-robin play. You guys did have that 2-0 and o now record here in the league. So looking forward, do you have any teams on your radar, at least, that you're a little bit scared of, or is this really just a tournament where just one more, your eyes are on the prize, you're just gonna go forward and dare anyone to stop it. Um, I'd say the only other team that kind of frightens us is probably Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, they have some players that we've played before. We know that they're a pretty decent squad. Um, the Jayhawk Esports squad is also looking a bit suspicious. I haven't really seen anything from them, but I think they're pretty high level. So, um, but yeah, I think it's nothing that we can't handle or nothing that we've done before, you know? So I'd say it's looking pretty good for us so far. All right, excellent. And uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to sit down with us. I mean, any final thoughts you want to give out or any shout outs you want to give uh, for anyone in the Oakland family of uh, eSports after that series win? I, yeah, I just want to shout out everyone at the Oakland facility, uh, Coach Leon for letting us be here in person. Um, it's just a really nice experience. Um, and I'd implore anyone who's thinking about going to college to try and find somewhere that has an eSports facility. It's one of the best experiences ever. So thank you for having me. All right, absolutely. And enjoy the rest of your night, Russ. Thanks for sitting yep, down with too. us. And with that, as we will slowly transition out of that, let him get back to his evening. We'll also let you guys get a quick break of water because we're going to throw you to a quick break. But do not go anywhere. Nice Star League Collegiate Action is going to be right back. Our Rocket League broadcast might have ended, but we'll be right back with some Overwatch. You do not want to miss it. 